order this uh, day, Tuesday, September 10th. We'll start with roll call. Mike Den. Here. Barbara Doss. Here. Barbara Stockhausen. Here. Dick Bonin. Here. Ken Killian. Here. Eileen Nichols has been excused. And Patrice Steiner. Here. First item on the agenda is a public hearing of consideration on the expansion of taxi hours for the city of Platteville's shared ride taxi service. Start with the staff presentation. Is that you, Howard? Yes, thank you very much. Um, staff is recommending the uh, following change to the operating hours for the Platteville shared ride taxi service. Um, one of the council's initiatives to reduce effects of overconsumption of alcohol was the approval of taxi stands on 2nd Street, north of Mineral Street. There are some taxi services that are available to take advantage of this. The Platteville Shared Ride cannot due to its restricted hours. Uh, the Shared Ride Taxi operates Monday through Saturday until 8 p.m. And this proposal would authorize the expansion of those hours on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights until 3 a.m. the following morning. Uh, for the remainder of the 2013 calendar year, that would mean 15 weeks, uh, seven hours per night, three nights a week, 15 weeks, or a total of 315 hours. Uh, at their hourly rate of 26.49, that would be a maximum expense of 8,344.35. This expense would be offset by any fares uh, generated. And I have the uh, standard fare schedule there. Uh, regular passengers, 275. Handicapped passengers, seniors over 65. Students, high school or below, 250. Uh, additional passengers uh, are a $1. dollar. Uh, and then there is a uh, fee for those people outside the city limits. And then there's another uh, fee for intermediate stops. Um, City of Platteville has the authority to establish f new fares if you see, so f see fit to do so. Um, we had talked about this back in the early part of the year. Uh, the council decided not to do so uh, at that time. Um, if we were, if we had done so, the the uh, state may have had some federal or state subsidy money to help defray these costs, but at this time they do not. Um, as you may recall, there have been some citizens who complained when we cut back hours a few years back. Uh, some of these mobility impaired persons uh, had some late night activities that they liked to do beyond the 8 p.m., but they could not because of the cut in the, uh, in the hours. Um, Currently, we're running a little bit under budget because we are uh, uh, above our expected fare revenues. I would project that uh, uh, we could be approximately 4000 under budget. Some of this could be applied to those additional expenses. Um, neither the university nor the businesses have committed any uh, to funding any portion of the deficit any commitment by them would also reduce taxpayer subsidies. At this point, uh, I would ask that you approve the expansion of the hours uh, for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights uh, to remain open till 3 a.m. Uh, beginning Thursday, September 12th, concluding Sunday morning, December 22nd, uh, 315 hours added up to a maximum of 83.44 and 35 cents uh, from the fund balance with fair revenues or uh, taxi budget to reduce those fund balance expenditures. Okay, thank you, Howard. Um, since there's no applicant, I'll skip the applicant statement. Oh, uh, we do have uh, Mr. Helwig in here in case you have specific questions about uh, the taxi Oh. operations itself he, he's he doesn't think he needs to speak on it unless you have specific questions on okay that. if the council has questions of him during discussion we can ask him to go to the podium yes thank you okay 
At this point, um, I have no public statements in favor, and there are no public statements against or public statements in general. Uh, council discussion or I questions? A, I have a question for Howard. Uh, was the university asked about making a commitment? And secondly, were the businesses asked about making a commitment? The university was asked, and we were unable to get a commitment from the university at this time. Uh, I, I did not specifically ask businesses. Uh, I know that we had worked through uh, um, Mr. Jack Ludke uh, of the Main Street program, but uh, I don't believe that he was able to get any commitments either. Thank you. Any other questions? Could somebody clarify for me when the bars close? Chief? Bar time? At 2 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. on Fridays, Saturdays. 2.30 a.m. on Fridays? Is this set locally? No, that's by state statute. And uh, we currently have two other taxis operating, two other taxi services operating, is that correct? Jan, would you happen to know that with the taxi licenses? Well, you'll be approving one tonight under the licenses, so we would have two other. So we have two other taxi companies plus this one. And this request is to use $8,300 of fund balance. Is that my understanding? Up this to would, that amount. Up to that amount. Uh, I I don't believe I've seen the taxi stand signs installed. Is that correct? Um, I don't recall if they've actually been installed yet. I've driven coming. up Second Street looking for them a couple of times. Okay. And so unless they were installed today, I'm relatively sure they haven't been installed. And do we believe that there's actually a need for this? As we discussed the alcohol uh, consumption issue earlier this spring and late last fall, um, this came up uh, a few times. Um, I, I think a, a lot of the context had been in whether or not to expand the shuttles route to support uh, bar time crowds. Um, but uh, I believe that the taxi service was discussed at that time, that it was a, a component of the service that was being asked for. Um, I can tell you that during the listening sessions I've held in the community, uh, we did have people at uh, Parkside ask for expanded hours. Uh, the sentiment at, at that where? time. Pardon me, at where? Um, the old hospital. Um, Park Place. Park, Park Place. Place, excuse me, Park Place. Um, at that location, the sentiment was well, I'd really like to see my grandson, granddaughter's basketball game, um, but I can get there, but I can't get home. Uh, and so at that point, uh, that was something that I started discussing with Howard about whether or not we should be looking at expanding the hours of the taxi service. Well, I recall a year or two ago, uh, there were residents from Jenner Towers who came to a council meeting to request uh, that the taxi hours be extended to. But we've now, I mean, at that point in time, I'm not sure we had what amounts now to three taxi services. Yeah, I don't know the history of taxi service provisions. I, and I don't know the hours of the other taxis either. Well, and the one that you, that's up for approval tonight, um, that one is for the Good Plan van, and that is mainly for the use at UNOS, you know, that they take their okay. mm -hmm. patrons home. I don't know that they're going to be out there taxiing other people. Yeah, down on 2nd yeah. Street, or I, I'm not aware of that with them. You actually, they actually don't have a call number at this point in time, do they? So you don't sit at home and call them, tell them to come get you and take you someplace like a regular taxi? I'm not sure. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm not aware that they do. Anyone have any other comments or questions? Anybody know the hours of the other taxi service that we haven't mentioned yet? Whatever that was. And whatever it is? You said there would be... Lack of cab? I'm not that... sure what their hours are. Okay. Yes, thank you. 
maybe there's a need for it. Well, this could be a test for the, until uh, December 22nd uh, to see if there actually is a need and how much of a need. Yeah. If you desired to fund it beyond December 22nd, it would need to be incorporated into next year's budget, Okay. which you'll see tonight it has not been at this point. And how much, uh, I know that um, most of the money comes from state and federal transportation money, right? And then the city also provides some revenue? Can the state and feds jump in next year? Um, if, we, if we want to expand the hours in 2014 as part of our budget discussions, now would be the time to do that. I have until October 15th to submit the uh, grant application for the 2014 cab service. If I request it, then federal and state monies would be available. I would have to look at the approximations, um, but the uh, federal and state monies are somewhere in the neighborhood of 40% of the of the cost, the the fares are another ten to fifteen percent, uh, and no, it's. But in other words, if our expenses do go up, <coughs> then you can request. We can we can request additional monies for from, 2014. For 2014, I cannot do any more. I cannot request any additional monies for calendar year 2013. Okay, yeah, that I would understand. Sure. I have uh, another question. Uh, this is through December 22nd, and one of the things I've heard is that the people in our community, uh, like in Jenner Towers and other places, wanted these extended hours, but it appears that we may be tailoring this for a younger population. So my question is, if we do this, are we going to do this for the whole summer, or is this just a extension what we've asked for at this time is till the end of December the 22nd date uh, it would be yet to be determined whether or not you desired to do it during summers so is um, there a reason we didn't go till December 31st no, it's, it's school gets out. basically your original point about uh, tailoring it to a younger crowd that um, they will not be here probably after December 22nd until the next calendar year. And there would be no events going on at the university either. There's basketball and things <coughs> over Christmas. Well, you can certainly it, if decide you, wish, you want to expand it beyond the 22nd. And there's other kinds of, I mean, I'm just saying that if we're providing taxi service for our community, we should think about the community. Okay. Well, December 31st is a Tuesday. Uh, if you want to extend it all the way through then. Oh, the first. Through that other weekend. Would it be very possible for the uh, taxi service to give us a breakdown just for that time period from now until December as to how their fares went down? Um, as far as if the people were elderly or anybody else, something generic like that, then we'd have an idea of what to look at continuing it I including maybe the time that they ran so that we know if right. this expanded hours would work I, I would ask oh. mr. Helwig to come forward and answer that question if on specific operational characteristics like this yeah we have a breakdown of uh, adults could you, um, could oh, you state your name and address Gordon Helwig uh, Platte Wisconsin 530 East Main Street that's where I live um, we do the computer breaks down everything we have a breakdown of adults, disabled adults, elderly, disabled elderly, kids. Um, it'll tell you exactly per hour how many people are running, and it'll give you everything. And are you aware of the need for these expanded hours and all? Have you had people request it? Uh, most of the people that requested this is, you know, like Jenner Towers or Park Place and stuff like that. But they usually run till 10, 30, 11 o'clock or something like that. Um, they usually don't go any later, but I know they're trying to tend to the problem they have uptown, trying to get kids back so they don't have any problems going from uptown back to the college usually. Safely. Mm -hmm. You think you can do it? 
We can do it. I'm just here to see whether you want to pass it or not. If you pass it, then I got to implement it and see how it works. And do you provide a regular report to somebody at the city hall right now as to the usage and? Uh, I'm not sure I mean, if you get the you get the breakdown of adults. Uh, um, I get a generic breakdown of um, the numbers, as Mr. Hellig said, the number of uh, adults and uh, seniors and things like that. I can ask for a more detailed breakdown by hour or anything like that, but normally I only get the generic breakdown that says this is how many of each category of person who rides the taxi each day. Seems like you might want that at least on a yearly basis as you make a grant application. One thing we haven't even mentioned uh, with the increased problem that we have with some crime issues, this might even help if the people would utilize the taxi and save some of the incidents that happened last weekend. Good point. I would agree. Any other questions for Mr. Hellick? I would just like uh, part of this to be seeing a detailed report of this so that we can we'll make an effective al evaluation. Before I'd like to see it through the 31st of December if we're serving our whole community. You want to see those numbers before it's voted on? Or? No. Oh, okay. No, I mean at the at, end. At the yeah. end, okay. At the end. We'll oh, see yeah. what happens. So you're saying you want to implement this if possible and then ask for the report afterwards when it's complete. right because they they couldn't give a report now because they're not open from 10 p.m to 3 a.m or whatever to, these to see if it are. really works and that way we'll know whether we're going to do it in 2014. Right. except that howard said we need to know by what was it october 15th yes oh to apply for a grant from a fund well you could always apply for it we wouldn't have to take the whole thing can't you amend the application downward if you decide to? I mean, we most could. of the time, we, if you ask for money and then you ask for less, people don't care. <laughs> it's if you ask for a little and then ask for lots more, then <laughs> it yes. becomes problematic. We, we can adjust our request right. afterwards, but in order to be in the queue, I have to have have my to request, request in uh, by October 15th. Thank you. All right, thanks. Any further discussion? I move we close the public hearing. Okay. Been moved and seconded. Uh, Jan will vote. Jen? Yes. Doss? Yes. Stockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Motion carries. Common Council action. I. I understand that this has uh, is proposed to have been taken from fund balance, but I think that we still have some remainder monies in uh, some other places. Maybe um, I did check it this afternoon. Just I figured that question might I come up tonight. Figured we might ask that question. Why, I'm not sure why, but I did. And uh, <laughs> there is enough money, just barely enough money, in the finance director position there that was originally budgeted for um, to cover this. So. 8,000, uh, the request was what, 8,000? Uh, 3, $344.35, but we've been told it's probably only gonna be four in the end. So I would make a motion to uh, increase the hours um, of the shared ride taxi through December 31. Uh, for the weekend hours as described uh, from 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. and that uh, we receive a detailed report at the end of that time uh, to be able to assess the effectiveness and that the, that the monies needed for this come from those monies that were not expended when we hired a finance director later in the year. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. We'll vote. Uh, excuse me. Um, may I ask, are you going to be approving the ordinance that's along with this? That was, that was for information on, it was not a, it was not for a 
ordinance approval. That was, oh, it's that was my okay. My okay. Uh, motion is fine. All right, Den. Yes. Doss. Yes. Stackhausen. Yes. Bonin. Yes. Killian. Yes. Steiner. Yes. Motion carries. I I have a question. Didn't we approve this ordinance about the taxi signs the yes. last time? Yes. That's included yes. in error. Yeah. Oh, that I'm was, sorry. That was that was an error. So. Looks like it's oh, yeah. very obvious. Next is consideration of consent calendar. The following items may be approved on a single motion and vote due to their routine nature or previous discussion. Please indicate to the council president if you would prefer separate discussion and action. Item A is minutes of August 27th, 2013 regular council meeting. Item B, payment of bills. Item C, financial report for August. Item D, appointments to boards and commissions. And tonight, President Nichols has reappointed Lynn Verger to the Safe Routes Committee. E is licenses, uh, Class C wine for Herb Enterprises, LLC, Woodman, Leslie Herb Agent, for premises at 45 North 3rd Street, the 3rd Street Brew Pub. Second item is temporary Class B B for beer for St. Augustine Parish for October 1st, Oktoberfest on September 27th. Item three, one and or two year operators for premises licensed to traffic in fermented malt beverages and intoxicating liquors. Item four, taxi vehicle and drivers. And item F, under permits, street closing for St. Mary Parish on September 29th from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And item two, street closing for St. Augustine Parish on September 27th from noon until midnight. I move to accept the consent calendar as so stated. Uh, second. Moved and seconded. We'll vote. Den? Yes. Dawes? Yes. Stockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Motion carries. The next is citizens' comments, observations, and petitions, if any. Uh, I have no requests um, right now. Barb, you've turned in one, but that was. It's, it can, I can talk now or I can wait till later. We'll wait till it comes on okay. the action item. So the only person who's requested to speak is our city manager, Larry Berkey. Yes. Thank you. I've got some good news tonight. Um, you may know that Jordan Burris, our recreation coordinator, has resigned her position, moved to Door County, and I'm here tonight to introduce our new recreation coordinator. Uh, Luke, would you come up? Uh, this is Luke Peters. He is formerly employed by the Eagle Ridge Resort and Spa in Galena, Illinois. Uh, he was accountable for planning, budgeting, staffing, and evaluating the swimming pool, fitness center, boat docks, youth and family programming, and also specialized in team building and special events. Um, Luke, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're looking forward to? Sure. Well, I actually am all sweaty because I just came from uh, football and ballet, so uh, I literally ran right over here after that. Um, so I apologize for the tardiness to the meeting. But uh, yes, I did come from uh, um, Eagle Ridge. I've worked there for the past eight years. I have lived in Platteville for the past uh, 10 years or so. My wife's a teacher at the uh, high school. Um, she is the French department over there. Um, in addition to working at Eagle Ridge, um, I previously worked for the Wisconsin DNR, um, U.S. Forest Service, and uh, County Parks. So with the city, now I only have to do national and I'll complete my circuit of uh, recreation uh, training. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm looking forward to everything. Fall, fall programming is uh, really getting underway. Um, basically, we have two programs starting every single night um, this entire week. So Jordan left just in time for me to take over. So I'm uh, jumping into things and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to everything. I like recreation, I love what I do. And I'm looking forward to working in the city that I live. So nice meeting everyone. You've uh, hit the questions? ground running, I see. Yes, yes, I literally, literally. So we've just ran uh, the kids through a very good football practice workout in 90 degree weather, so. <laughs> so. So it wasn't ballet football? No, it was not ballet football. That was two separate I events know. we ran. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> I know, I knew you were joking as well. I was going with it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Kind of cool. Welcome to yeah, the city of Platteville. Thank you. Reports, under committee reports, uh, Airport Commission Nichols is not here to add anything else. Museum Board, Barb Stockhausen. 
I'm always confused. Should we talk about the meeting that just happened or the meeting that's listed on here? Uh, only if there's something that you need to add from what is in the minutes in the packet. If something major happened at the last meeting. Well, we're starting example. to talk about the task force okay. uh, information. Recommendations. Right. Okay. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commission on Aging, uh, Dick Bonin. I have nothing new. Ambulance Committee, Barb Doss. Dad. And Library Board was Eileen. Other reports, uh, the 2014 Executive Budget, Larry. Thank you. Could, I'd like to take a few minutes to give you some highlights of what I've put together for the Platteville proposed executive budget. Um, at this point, I'd also like to special uh, give a thank you out to Dwayne Borgen and Valerie Martin, who worked very hard and helped me put all of this together. Um, I couldn't couldn't have done it without them. Quite frankly, there's a significant amount of information in here. Uh, today, the Platteville City Council receives the 2014 executive budget for their consideration. The city of Platteville continues to struggle with balancing our desires to improve public streets, manage debt levels, and reduce operating costs. The budget proposed this evening makes the most of what has been a very challenging effort at balancing our city's finances and the desires of our taxpayers, our employees, and our city's future. Uh, a few of the details of this budget proposal include um, we as a community have seen a significant increase in new construction in our community. Our tax base is going up, but also the value of our community has been dropping. So at this point, the net new construction has been enough to overcome any decreases in property values. Um, I'm also proposing a 2.5% tax increase as part of this budget proposal. Uh, the general fund for 2014 comes in at about $100,000 less than last year. Our operating budget has not been this low since 2008. One of the issues that I've noticed as I've put the budget together is our growing health insurance expenses. In 2014, the city will likely experience at least a 10% increase in health insurance costs. This means our city's health insurance premium expense will grow to $769,000 in 2014. To put things in perspective, our proposed tax levy is $3,748,000, 48 million, excuse me. So roughly about 20.5% of the revenue we generate through taxes goes to pay for our health insurance. Uh, this can have a staggering effect and is a, is a big concern that we have to start addressing. Uh, in 2013, uh, a new election brought a sweep of uh, two new council members. Um, many in the community have perceived that the council members ran on returning the city to a 40-hour work week. Based on the results of the election, I find that the, it's the public's desire to return city employees to a 40-hour work week. The expenses for this change is approximately $90,000 and is part of the furlough day package that I've proposed this evening. I'm also proposing increasing rental license fees by $25 beginning January 1, 2014. In 2013, the city budget created a garbage utility charge and began charging property owners for half of the garbage service fees. At that time, the plan was to add another half of the costs in 2014's budget. Since that adoption, the state of Wisconsin has changed their laws. As part of Act 20, they have incorporated um, these fees into the levy limit law. And so we are no longer, it no longer makes sense for the city to pursue that as an option. Uh, creating utilities and adding to the garbage fee uh, simply do not have a benefit to the community at this point. The city of Platteville has used the low interest rate environment and has borrowed significantly over the past decade. Right now we have nearly $20 million worth of debt. As a result, we can expect that our debt payments will increase now and in the future. 
To slow or stop this trend, the city of Platteville must keep our capital spending level while using more cash and borrowing less. The capital improvement budget is funded by the city's tax levy. In 2014, that amount will be 42% of the budget from the city's tax levy and we'll be borrowing 52%. Uh, this ratio is getting better over the last three years. We are adding more and more cash, excuse me, the percentage of cash used in our capital improvement budget is increasing every year, which is a good sign and a good trend. In order to balance our operating budget and to cover our increased debt payments, this budget proposal includes the following changes. Uh, I've reduced the funding for the public museums from $257,000 a year down to $190,000 per year. I've also discontinued the use of the general fund balance to support our operating budget. If you recall, last year we used about 250,000 out of our savings to pay for our operating budget. I've also cut the city manager's assistant from three quarter time down to half time. And I propose removing the added part time senior center position that the council recently uh, adopted. I present this budget to you tonight, the city council, a full two weeks ahead of last year's schedule. Uh, this was purposeful. I know there are gonna be a lot of questions regarding this budget and a lot of difficult decisions ahead of you. This executive budget will change and evolve before it becomes the city council's budget for 2014. And much information is still forthcoming. We have a significant amount of information that has not been provided yet. Our health insurance rates, our state aids, um, and there's, it will make significant impacts to the budget. So hopefully things start getting better from here on out. I know that many changes will be made and priorities will be debated. I and other residents are now putting our faith in your decision making and we await your direction. Thank you. And I believe uh, President Nichols has set up a work session. Yes. To next Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday the 17th. Is it at 6 o'clock here or? Yes. 6 p.m. Right. 6 p.m. here in council chambers. Is there going to be a format for that uh, work session as far as what we're going to cover sequence? We have uh, a thick document. We're just going to jump all over. We're going <laughs> to... Uh, I believe that uh, the council president will have to set the tone for the meeting and determine exactly what we intend to cover. Uh, I believe at this meeting coming up uh, for the special session, we will be hearing from department heads who are not particularly happy with the cuts and changes I've made to department budgets. Uh, so I anticipate that that'll probably be the starting point for our discussion is to find out what changes the city manager has made over staff proposals and begin thinking about the budget in those terms. So will we get a new, uh, new, new agenda, amended agenda, listing the departments that are coming, going to come and talk? Uh, no, it's an open forum. Department heads who have concerns are welcome to attend. Uh, they've all been asked to attend, and they've all also uh, been asked to bring a memo or a note uh, asking for whatever changes they desire uh, to ensure that everyone has a document that they can refer to through the budget discussions. Will we get any of this information beforehand? Family? I don't believe so. I, I have asked department heads to hand it out at the meeting. Um, I think it'd be good for them to have the opportunity to speak with you directly about it as opposed to providing the information in advance and, and perhaps not being able to converse the way they feel and, and the, the changes that they want. Any other questions? I, I don't anticipate at this meeting that the council will make changes as a result of department heads requests. I, I think that that's something that you'll have to consider as you debate the budget and further changes come up uh, down the line. <coughs> okay, moving on to other reports. Item two is airport financial report. Item three is the water and sewer revenue and expense report. Item four, city attorney itemized statement. And last, number five, department progress reports. Anyone have any questions at all on those? 
move on to action items and the first item is ordinance 13-19 amending the official traffic map no parking on Calhoun Drive this was uh, a petition submitted by a resident on Calhoun Drive Dr. Robert Smith <coughs> requesting um, that the sign be removed no parking sign be removed on Calhoun the no parking sign came about because of the Roundtree Commons, um, the new dorm going up, and residents were concerned that uh, students would be parking up in that uh, residential district. I'd like to see, uh, just to talk about this a little, um, yeah, adopting uh, option two would allow parking during the day, but prevent overnight parking and assist our uh, folks in terms of cleanup so I would support option two which then would uh, repeal the no parking on Calhoun Drive during the day but would then uh, make it an official activity that people cannot park on Calhoun Drive from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. so that should help the residents and it should also uh, continue what the the original thought was that perhaps this would serve as a parking lot it wouldn't then as an overnight parking lot it wouldn't then serve a no, as an overnight parking lot if there was no parking from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. and that uh, option number two would allow the police department to enforce no overnight so if people do park then they'd get a ticket right okay. I have a question for the chief of police would this be um the only street, no. one block, that it have, would have this requirement, no parking 3 a.m. to 6 a.m.? Yes. In that area, yes. Yes. And okay. I that, have an opinion on that. Would it be a, it'd be a special thing to go out and check? No. Right now, there's no parking, parking. period. Oh, but in, if this were passed, <coughs> no parking 3 to 6, it would be a special thing for the chief, for the police to go out and check. And for that reason, I, I, my preference is that this not be done piecemeal. That entire Ready Drive, Camla Court, Amar, um, Minaj, that they all would go to the prohibition that uh, Barb Doss mentioned. I think that that would be in line with the, largely in line with the covenants that are in the neighborhood and would accomplish what we are seeking to which is to prohibit overnight parking it would allow me to make allowance for excused parking as needed for individuals that did have uh, driveway work that uh, were having an overnight guest on occasion much in line with other areas of the city so if i hear you correctly you're suggesting ready drive go to no parking three to six that whole that area whole, that whole area D D doug isn't ready drive already no parking that's the area covenant. no no, it's, no, no. It's no By, parking excuse me it's no parking any time up to right. cadillac right and so which, which has been problematic with individuals like i said i i understand okay since it doesn't appear that this has uh support from the police department i'm going to move to table this and ask that this come back rather than as a piecemeal action that somebody look at this as a full-fledged activity in that area and come back with a a better plan so i move to table i second that because i was going to yeah, was request the council to do the same one thing we didn't even mention this will make snow removal much easier well there's no parking, no parking. Anyway. yeah but some of them are the whole thing. Okay, we have a, a motion on the floor and it's been seconded. We'll vote. Den? Yes. Das? Yes. Stockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Motion carries. Oh, All right. Right. On to item two. Resolution 13-36, authorizing the issuance and sale of $5 million general obligation promissory notes. Uh, 
Um, I'd like to ask Jeff Blanche to, to approach the mic and uh, discuss this for us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. As always, it's a pleasure. Um, we have before you probably have to state your name. And Jeff Belange with Hutchinson Shockey Early and Company. I've been um, working with the city for some time now. I think since 2006 regarding our financings and uh, ratings, etc. Financial issues that uh, that you undertake, uh, TIF districts, etc. Uh, I first of all want to again uh, compliment your administration, uh, Mr. Borgen, and. Uh, and Larry uh, for their assistance in the rating procedure. I think as you all know, or we have, I guess we've got a couple new people. In the process, uh, when we go out for a financing, we submit um, our demographic information, uh, Security Exchange Commission full disclosure documents, the actual issue structure that we're looking at to a company called Standard & Poor's. Uh, headquartered in New York. Standard & Poor's then reviews our existing debt and they assign a letter grade rating to it which is indicative of the probability of it being paid back over the time we're prescribing. Okay, When I started um, here we were at an A level and uh, remember meeting with uh, Mr. Berner and Mr. Borgen and one of the first things I had on my list was I'm pretty sure I can get you to the double A because that's where you ought to be. <laughs> and we are. And that's a wonderful rating. There's nothing wrong with the A category. But between an A and jumping up to the double A minus, in this particular market, it means as much as a half a percent every year. In other words, a half a percent lower interest rates than had we remained an A. I'm happy to say, of course, that uh, our double A minus is reinstated for our existing debt and this particular issue. And you will note uh, there's also a short-term issue for the purchase of some property. I believe we're calling it Rosemeyer. And, um, and that is a short-term rating and an S&P plus one, which is the highest we can get. So um, again, thank you to administration, staff, uh, Jan. Um, really quite wonderful people to work with. And uh, so it's been, it was a lot of fun. Um, with that, we then go out into the particular marketplace. And we're competing against other credits of similar nature. Um, and what I did is I took the liberty of handing out a single page sales comparison sheet that I'd like you to take a peek at and we'll, we'll go through this. Um, also keep in mind though that our S&P 1 plus our, in our land is, is actually a taxable rate. So it's difficult to compare that and expect to get the same rate you would on a tax exempt interest rate. The reason it's taxable is because the IRS says we intend to ultimately sell or give or donate this property to a for-profit so they can build on it. And as Larry said earlier in his address, we're improving our tax base by doing such. So uh, unless we were to buy it for green space or to put one of our facilities on it, like the library or a municipal building or the fire station, it ends up being purchased on a taxable basis. Um, that's why there's the difference. But let's take a look, if you would, at um, our credits here where we compare the town of Menasha, which is a double A2. That's a Moody's double A2. There's a little bit different um, use, but they're basically, if this were a double A3 town of Menasha, that would compare exactly to our double A minus. Moody's goes double A3, double A2, double A1. Standard & Poor's goes double A minus, double A double A plus. So when you compare Town of Menasha, they're actually a next step up in terms of credit. Okay? And it's probably due to, you know the valley and you know their diversification of tax base and they're much larger than we are. So all those things fit into those categories. But also take a look at the fact that even though they're up slightly in terms of letter grade, they also have a shorter maturity. The maturities we're comparing to, they're an April 1st payment. We're a 10-1 payment. So now think about you going to the bank and asking for a six-month CD or a 12-month CD. You better get a better rate of return on your 12-month because you're out six months longer in terms of time. And so my point being is you're going to pay a little higher rate for a longer coupon, and we're six months longer. 
But take a look and start at the bottom because that's really where it affects the cost of our money. I think we'll all remember from school somewhere of the formula interest is equal to principal times rate times time. And where we really, sh I think, shine is in the longer maturities when you compare our AA minus to not only the Grafton School District, which is also a AA2, which is on the bottom, but the Town of Menashe's AA2, we're only an 05 away. The credit difference alone should be 10 basis points. The six months, you tell me, is it a tenth of a percent? Is it a quarter of a percent for an extra six months? So if you understand that, I'm happy to use these comparables, even though I couldn't find a double A minus in this market. I could only find double A twos, which are close, but a little bit higher grade rating. So if you understand that, particularly when you look at, oh, let's say 19 and out, we're a 195 to their 190. Um, if you look at the 17s on Grafton, they're a 150. We're a 135. We're actually through them. So. Um, I was pretty happy with those particular rates. Now, what this all boils down to is that our five million, when you consider that we had to pay for a rating, legal opinion, printing and distribution, QSIPs, everything else, we have a true interest cost of a 2.60% on our five million dollars over 10 years. That's not the lowest we've gotten. We've actually had a 10-year note issue where we were a little bit lower, but that was just due to the fact that the markets were a bit different than we are now. They're still obviously real good in terms of uh, credit if you're if you're double A and you're borrowing right now. What I also want to show you is, and I passed out the $5 million debt service schedule, and it's accompanying schedules or component parts, because the $5 million is not $5 million of new money. This $5 million represents a note we did three years ago for capital projects within the city. Those capital projects have been completed. It was $3,950,000 we borrowed. And I suggested because at that time we were looking at additional issues coming and it was easier to structure more money than less money. I said, let's just park this one for a bit. Larry, I think Larry was here. Larry or David were a bit nervous. I think Larry was here and he was a bit nervous about that short term. But I'm happy to be able to say that. That was sitting, um, it's been sitting at a, Pretty good interest rate at 2.875. It's actually due December of 15, but it's callable this December. So we're going to get rid of that 2.875 and the only the two years, we've got to do something with it in two years anyway. I've restructured it so that we can pay it out in its entirety over 10 years at a 2.60%. It was worth the bet. And I took a big chance in saying that because next time if I do that and it's not worth the bet, Larry's going to throw me out the window on the top floor, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, it's nice to be able to go back and say we, we made a good bet and uh, it's worked for us. But take a look at the schedule. You look at the five million and how it's amortized. If you turn the page, you will see what represents the takeout of those capital project notes. It's three million nine seventy five. We have fully amortized it over that time, and I've structured it within your debt service so that your net annual debt is relatively level. And you'll see that by looking at the preliminary official statement. I, I don't know, if Jan, did they all have a preliminary OS, or did we put it on? No? We'll get you a final. I'll make sure that everyone gets a final, because it's great demographic information, and they can see all their debt and how it works and how it's allocated to the TIDs, et cetera. If you'll turn, and you can see up the top, it's, it says general fund tax levy portion. If you turn to the next page, you'll see it's TID 4. Now remember you just amended some of your TIDs. And if you go to the last page, which is actually page 6 of your TID 4 TIF amendment, you will see that they prescribe borrowing a million twenty for the projects and economic feasibility listed above on that last page. You see that? Is everyone with me? What I did is I took those cash flows. If you look down at the bottom, those cash flows scheduled payment of about 192,996. Does everyone see that? Mm -hmm. All right. Flip the page before, go back one page. We're below that. On average, we're below those 192s. 
My understanding is that increment is already in place, which would make me feel pretty comfortable about the fact that we never have to levy a dime for this particular portion out of that TID because the revenues should be there and we're paid out through 19, we'll be finished with it. Okay, this is part of the five million. Everyone with me? Okay, so those are the two um, items we've addressed with that five million dollar issue. Any questions? So the annual loan payment each year is the 192? That was our estimate. That's on the 1 million. That's on the that's 1 million 20? That's, oh, that's on the TID Yeah, million. that was the estimate on a TID 4 TID. after we made the amendment. So that portion is, is a, been actually extricated from the 5 million, Patrice. And that's just the TID 4 portion. Schedule before it is the three million nine seventy five, which, if you add the two, gives us our five million dollar note issue we're looking at tonight. I put them in one issue because it saves us issuance costs, and it's easier to handle. Certainly, looking at and you know, Dwayne's got enough payments to make; he doesn't need an extra two issues as if we can just do it in one. But then we we provide the uh, schedule so he knows how to allocate it from TID revenues versus tax levy revenues. So the annual payment on the debt would be coming from a couple of different places. That's correct, right. It's coming from two sources. Okay. The 3975 from the general fund uh, and the balance from TID4. I know it's a little more info than we normally go over, but I thought it'd be good to see, you know, so you get an understanding of what we look at when we're trying to structure issues for you and, and the ideas we have in terms of trying to control the issuance costs, et cetera. on that rating for the city, um, is that done every year? Excellent question, Patrice. Yes. Anytime we issue. In fact, sometimes the rating agencies will, if you haven't issued for a while, and I've got a few clients who haven't issued in the last two years, they're actually coming in to do follow-ups and asking for additional information so they can just go back and check to make sure the rating stays in place and no nothing significant has happened. Um, and normally, if it goes two and a half years, they'll come in take a look at your, as long as you had debt outstanding, they want to know if things have changed relative to its credit worthiness. Yeah, we were stuck with actually having to pay that fee each time, but we, that versus doing a non-rated issue, we more than save hundreds of thousands relative to the fee we pay for Standard & Poor's. Jeff, if I could, I'd like to ask, uh, just to clarify for the audience, uh, this debt service is two components. One component is covered by TID4, and the other component is improving the interest rate that we already have for the other half or the other portion of the debt. So as a whole, this is going to make finances better for the general public. Right. I make a motion we adopt Resolution 1336, uh, authorizing the issuance and sale of $5 million in general obligation promissory notes, Series 2013B. I'll second it. <coughs> okay, we have a motion uh, on the floor, and it's been seconded. We'll vote. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Stockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Motion carries. Next one, that's the Okay. And item C is resolution 13-37, authorizing the issuance and sale of 1,070,000 general obligation promissory notes and the issuance and sale of 1,070,000 taxable note anticipation notes in anticipation thereof. <laughs> I apologize on behalf of the attorneys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have two resolutions here and it gets confusing because it looks like you're borrowing the money twice, yes. but in actuality you're not. We've had this before, believe it or not, a few years ago. Anytime we're issuing a NAN or TRAN or BAN in anticipation of, the bond attorneys, more importantly the bond purchasers of this, would like to know that you've given yourselves authority to ultimately issue notes or bonds in the future to take this out. Because this is a short term note. It actually does not apply against your borrowing. I always say it's the most flimsy promise a municipality can make to get money. Because we're really promising nothing in terms of any cash flows, 
in terms of any tax levy. We're just saying lend us some money and in the future we're going to issue some type of instrument to actually m make you whole. <laughs> and people step up to the plate and they lend us money at some ridiculously low rates because Wisconsin credits are good and we pay our debts. So what we do first is we put that actual template, if you will, which is called the actual bond or note resolution in place, and then we borrow the money on what is called the anticipation note, where the interest rate and the par amount, et cetera, are described. So is that more confusing? Yes. <laughs> Just say it's got to do with attorneys. You know? <laughs> we understand. And this money is for the purchase of land. That's correct, Barb. This is Rose. I believe you're calling it Rose, Rosemeyer. Mm -hmm. And here it has to be taxable, as we said earlier, because the SEC says, listen, right. you know, it's going to end up being in a for-profit's hand, which we want, and we want it sooner than later, certainly, so we can get the development to, to pay it and to pay other things. Well, I'll move adoption of uh, uh, Resolution 1337. I think it is, 1337. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, note anticipation, into anticipation thereof, whatever. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, we'll vote. Den? Yes. Das? Yes. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Motion carries. And thank you, Jeff, for all your hard work. I think we have one more, which you're very welcome, Patrice. We do. We do. Is there one in NAN resolution? Do do? Or did we take care of both of them with that? I think it's oh, just it's one. all in one, I thought. It's oh, okay, okay. It's all in one. You're right. I apologize. We're good. It is. Thank you. Right. You go home now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item D is resolution 13-36, adopting the Grant County All Hazards Mitigation Plan. Um, I realize Brian's in class tonight and yes, he could not be here. Um, that is correct. Uh, uh, what I've done is I've asked uh, Brian to take a look at the All Hazards Mitigation Plan and then submit a memo to the City Council alerting him to any concerns he saw uh, having read the memo, I, I do not believe there are any concerns that he has regarding the plan, um, but uh, um, the plan has been available to the public and has been on our website since we received it. If anyone would like to continue to look at it or table this, you're welcome to do so. Um, unfortunately, Brian is going to be missing a few council meetings because he is becoming certified for paramedic service. So um, we encourage that and uh, have excused his attendance here. And who wrote, who writes the plan? Uh, I believe Grant County hired a consultant to write the plan. Um, I couldn't tell you the consultant off, well, no, I can't tell you the consultant offhand, um, but it was written and approved by Grant County. And in order for us to receive FEMA aid in emergency situations in the future, we have to have adopted the Grant County All Hazards Mitigation Plan. So that's why it's before you today. And a letter from Grant County explaining that should also be in your packet. Move, move to adopt. Oh, uh, wait. Um, Ken's got a question. Is this the correct resolution number? There is no We have uh, 1336 here, and B is also 1336. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Let's see the resolution number. The resolution I have isn't numbered. Yeah, but I just did 1336 and 1337. Yeah, so. that would be the wrong number then on D. It's supposed to be 1338. Let's change it to 1338. That's something that's uh, record keeping. We can get that fixed. Yeah, there's another one. Yeah, this one. Okay, hey, Barb, you were. All right, move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, adopt the Grant County All Hazards Mitigation Plan. We'll vote. Den? Yes. Das? Yes. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, item E is the Grant County Highway Construction Aids. This is something we do every <laughs> year. Um, Howard, do you want to explain that quickly? Okay. Um, it's a program that has been here for a long, long time. 
we put in 2,000 money in escrow. The Grant County puts in 2,000 in ex escrow. When we do a, our uh, street reconstruction project, we ask for the $4,000 back. And this is something. This is a resolution that uh, that would authorize doing so. Move to approve. Second. second. Moved by Barb Dawson, seconded by Ken Killian. We'll vote. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Motion carries. Item F is the ALS intercept, intercept agreement. Again, Mr. Allen is unable to attend this evening. Um, the attached agreement is, it would allow Platteville EMS to receive reimbursement for services provided to patients that we're transporting on behalf of other jurisdictions. Platteville EMS has been able to receive reimbursement for the patients in the past that we've, we've uh, transported so far. Uh, however, that may not be the case in the future, and we just want to make sure we have an agreement with neighboring jurisdictions to make sure that we are reimbursed if something should happen. Well, why would they not, I mean, why would it may not happen in the future? Well, I can tell you that the, that the jurisdiction doing the transport often relies on Medicare or Medicaid for reimbursement. And if Medicare or Medicaid refuses reimbursement or something should go wrong, this agreement would mean that the other jurisdiction has to reimburse us what's due. They called us for aid. They should compensate us for any machinery or tools that we've used or time. Um, we haven't had any problems, but it's better to be safe and have an agreement with everybody beforehand. And do you see any, we just, we still have the two ambulances, Larry, would you see any problems arising um, if uh, one no. ambulance is called out for an, for an ALS intercept that only leaves us with one? Right, we always have one available. Uh, we wouldn't go on an intercept, we would turn it down if we did not have an ambulance available to stay, to serve the residents. And that's dispatch that would do that? Or yeah, how that? yeah. Okay. Um, we, we've currently only done, I believe, four of these, and it's been something that we've taken on early in the spring. So it's not like it's a, it's not a popular service. It's not something that we're always doing runs on. Okay. It's just, uh, when it does happen, we'd like to have something that says, hey, we don't care if Medicaid pays you or not, you still owe us the money. That, that's not actually what this says. It says it allows Plavel EMS to seek reimbursement for intercepts from patients regardless of insurance providers. It doesn't say anything about seeking reimbursement from services, right. regardless of whether, so I'm, unless you're, somebody's description isn't right, it appears what you're saying doesn't match what's in the verbiage of the. Well, I, you can look at paragraph nine, requesting ambulance provider. Um, the other provider is responsible for the billing and collections associated with the ALS intercept. Um, so they're responsible for collecting it from whomever. Um, we, we agree to allow the requesting ambulance provider to bill Medicare, Medicaid, HMO patients for the service. That means that HMO, Medicare, Medicaid works with the patient because they have to be the ones that receive the bill. Uh, let's see, this will, bill would include the cost of services provided by both agencies. Yep, number 11 is, is a little bit more clear. Uh, requesting ambulance provider, i.e. the other jurisdiction, will pay Platteville EMS the difference between the Medicare Medicaid reimbursement and the Medicare Medicaid um, reimbursement rates for basic level of service versus the advanced life services. Advanced level services. I move we accept this ALS intercept agreement. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to accept the ALS intercept agreement. We'll vote. Den? Yes. Doss? Yes. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Steiner? Yes. Motion carries. And that does it for the action items on the agenda. Uh, we move on to the information discussion portion. There are two items. 
Uh, item A is resolution amending the city of Platteville permitted parking program. Uh, yes, at this point we have fully leased out uh, the parking lot that is available for leased parking. Um, you'll see in the staff note that the RDA has come up with an option uh, and staff has also provided an option and uh, we're looking for direction from the city council as to whether you're interested in expanding the leased parking program. I'm sorry. I would like to say a bit about the RDA's recommendation uh, in that the recommendation from administration is different. Uh, you might, some might recall that last year at this time, the RDA was sitting in meetings, hours and hours of meetings with people from the downtown regarding downtown parking. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, in fact, I don't know if the journal here wants to laugh about these meetings. <laughs> I see Steve over here smiling when I say sitting in hours and hours of meetings. At any rate, at the end of that time, um, and in speaking with the downtown people that were there, residents and others, one of the things that the RDA wanted to do was keep any leased parking, or assigned parking, if we call it that, instead of leased parking, on the fringes of the downtown so that there is more uh, turnover on spaces within closer to the core of the downtown. And the second, uh, the second thing was to try to um, provide spaces if there were going to be assigned spaces on both sides, the north side of Main Street and the south side of Main Street. So the recommendation that the RDA has made is to provide spaces on both the north side of Main Street and the south side of Main Street. And while I know that only half of the uh, spaces were proposed, that's the other thing. Last year, as Mr. Den would say, we, we had seven assigned spaces of which none were leased and all sat empty. And so we wanted to be very uh, uh, conservative in terms of proposing additional because we don't want 27 spaces <laughs> sitting empty. And what we would like is to be able to add spaces as they're needed rather than to add 27 spaces or 26 spaces in one part. We'd also like to provide opportunity on both, like I said, north and south side of Main Street. So the proposal that the RDA forwarded was, I think, 13 spots on the south side of Main Street and seven six or seven spots on the north side of the Main Street area so that people from both sides of, could be served. So I, that's, and, and I know that it may be more work, but um, you know, I think we're here to serve the citizens. Anyone else have any comments? My, my preference is to uh, lease out to 27. And secondly, my uh, preference is to lease these at a lower rate. Uh, previously, I had suggested a rate of $20 per month, and the, the rate suggested here is 30 And I say that because uh, these lots are located farther from the center of the city. People have to walk more. They're not as convenient. So I'd lower the rate and, and have all the lots leased. I have a question. What do you think the people on Roundtree would think of you leasing out a parking spot in front of their house? I don't think they'd appreciate that. First off, they pay taxes. That's part of their parking or anybody else that happens to come along. It's across the street. It's the diagonal one that faced mm -hmm. the across McGregor. Yeah, oh, because it says Roundtree, and that's, that's pretty much all residential. Tree. No, no, no. These are separate. Except the part behind Dick's. Right, and that's where it's That's at. where we're at. The diagonal ones are straight in one or the other, but they're diagonal or Sure. I'm from, and it's not on, on the street. The east side of the round tree. Right. There's a, a brochure of where the lots are and their configuration in your packets if anybody wants to refer to those later. Yeah, it's a question to you, Larry. Can I ask this? Who leased the stalls now that are finally leased in that little parking lot? All seven of them, I understand, are now leased. I don't know the names of the people. I can generalize and say probably at least half of them were students. Okay. Um, I know that regional planning also leased one of the spaces. Uh, their new office did not provide parking for their Since staff. it mentioned in here an annual payment, um, 
that makes those stalls when the kids or students are gone um, nice parking stall that nobody can use correct no right. they're paying thirty dollars a month they're designated right. That's kind of seems kind of a waste, oh. isn't it? Can they sublease these a lot? If if you would, if you guys would refer to the the brochure that was put in your packet, it talks about the the parking fees are thirty dollars per month, but they have to pay it up front in advance, and the year is a is not a calendar year. It's a June one to May thirty first. So if it is a student that's occupying the space, uh, they could use it for the school year okay the 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 point is well taken though because during summer months one can assume that a student may not be in Platteville in which case they are paying for the lot in the summer months even though they're not using it which is I think your point okay. any other comments or questions I have one more how do you think they would be enforced well the program is set up where each space is numbered and nobody has to have a tag on their car. Um, what happens is if somebody's in your parking spot, you call the police and alert them to the fact that your leased space is being used by someone else. Uh, the police department will make an effort at trying to contact the owner of the car that's parked there. If they fail, they will simply write a citation to the person who's parked there and have them towed out of your space. And there is a sign there that says reserve parking. Yes, yep. Parking. yep. We've signed them uh, to ensure that people don't use those spots. Um, Originally, we had all 92 spaces painted and numbered, and then the program didn't go forward. It was shrunk to seven spaces. Uh, so we've since repainted the spaces uh, a slightly different color, and um, uh, only the least parking kept the numbers. We'll have to bring that back and probably do a refresher paint. Another question. On the, park, on the parking spots that you would like to have in this program, how many of them are in front of residential property? Well, I, I, I didn't evaluate the RDA's proposal. I can tell you the staff proposal on Roundtree is all of the parking spaces facing McGregor Plaza uh, at the perpendicular location to the street. I don't believe any of them front residential. It's all the back of McGregor Plaza. Correct. Um, and even the RDA's proposal, I think, is mostly city parking lots. Uh, all city they're all city parking lots so it it's city parking lots are just that city parking lots for everybody that pay taxes in this community right not just to sit there and use it as an income for the city okay thank you sure no other comments move on to uh, item b resolution 13 is that 1337 again? It'll be a new one. Okay. Yeah. It, Adopting the city of Platteville's 2014 fee schedule. Larry, I think um, you had adjusted a few. Yes. At our last council meeting, we talked about the fees, and it would have gone for action, uh, except that after discussing it at a council meeting, uh, staff felt that some of the numbers under the building inspections department should be upped or changed. Uh, if you notice, like a plumbing permit, in 2013, it was three cents a square foot. Uh, we're proposing that that go to 12 cents a square foot for a plumbing permit or for HVAC. Um, we found that some of those permits are <clears throat> vastly underpriced compared to other communities. And uh, uh, we decided that it was in, a, in the city's best interest to stay on a, a par with other communities and to ask the city council to consider an increase on those fees as well. So we brought it back for more information and discussion as opposed to action. Other cities our size or larger? Uh, I, I can't be specific. Uh, we had, um, and unfortunately, Joe, Joe Carroll is absent this evening. Um, his department ran some surveys and, and did some numbers to come up with the, the rate. Um, I was not involved in the surveying, but I could certainly find that out for next time. It would be, for me anyway, it would be important because Okay. Larger cities, you're, obviously your fees are going to be higher than what they are here, okay? And I don't think that we need to try to run fees the same as Madison might have. I agree. But we don't so, know what Madison's is. No, we so don't. That's I, why I asked. If I, have a, a large city. Yeah. I have a question. Are these fees then fees that were proposed by department heads? Well, what was originally done, uh, I reviewed the fees, increased the ones I thought were appropriate, and then I asked each department to take a look at it during a department head meeting. 
And um, after it was presented to the city council, uh, Mr. Carroll spoke up and said, I think we need to look at the building inspection fees. And um, can you tell me, are the building inspection fees designed so that the fee is to pay for the inspection? I mean, yes, I that know. is how the serve. That's how the, the fee has to be appropriated. So, you can't make profit at it. It has okay. to be, it's supposed to be designed to pay for the service. Okay. So are we then to believe that the current fee that we're subsidizing this inspection? Uh, the building inspection Taxes. department does cost the city funds. Um, so I, I, I think that it, it all depends on how you look at the numbers, but some could make that assumption. Okay. This is a possibility then that with the outside contractor that what they charge to do this inspection is a little more and that's why our fees have to go up just to match that? Because you said they, they have to be a wash, right? Yeah. Um, I don't understand what you mean by a contractor. Like okay, a, we have a, you have, we have a contractor that goes around and does rental inspection. Oh no, this is a separate program. That rental inspector does not look, nobody takes out a permit to pay for that. That's paid for with the rental license program. Okay. That's a separate program and it, and it, it is supposed to be a wash as well. Um, however, there's some staff time that goes into that and that's why that is being proposed as a slight increase this year as well. Thank you. Sure. But, but this is when somebody perhaps is building a new building. So this is a building yep. inspection. So if I'm building a new house, then yep. I that would have be the to building have a plumbing permit. Yes. Or if you're adding a bathroom to your house, what does it cost in staff time to come out and look at the inspection and to, to look at the plumbing? Okay. So that's what the building inspection fee is. I will confirm with uh, community planning and development as to what they considered when making this recommendation and if they surveyed specifically what cities they surveyed. I have a question about the rental license uh, fees. Uh, what is the shortage as far as staff needs, income wise, to cover? You come up with $115 raising it from $90, so how'd you come up with 115? Uh, <clears throat> quite honestly, Ken, that's a very difficult thing to come up with. Um, <laughs> we're doing the best, uh, I would argue it's perhaps our best guess at the costs. Um, and if we find that the department is still at a point where we're, we're spending more time on this than what we thought, uh, we may be looking for a greater increase in a future date. Um, I can tell you right now that the administrative assistant in that department spends um, spends a, a portion of her time helping with this program, and uh, we haven't billed at all for any of that person's time. So I guess we're trying to figure out um, incrementally how much it needs to go up to pay for that. And, and ultimately, whether it pays for it or not is a city council decision. If you believe that residents should help with that program then then at some point we won't increase it any further as a community you know when the last time uh this fee was raised i wish joe was here to answer some of these okay. uh, i can tell you he and i talked about it and my recollection is at least four or five years ago okay. if not longer four or five years. Four or five years. okay all right any other questions if not, this concludes the business part of the meeting, and we will move, uh, move to uh, the move to closed. closed section for Wisconsin State Statute 19.85. Um, consider deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require closed session. And this is speci specifically discussion of the negotiating strategy to be followed to be followed for a possible purchase of a lot from century and uh, not only move to closed session but then to adjourn after and we come out of closed session okay. I'll second it okay we'll vote Den yes Das yes Stackhausen yes Bonin yes Gillian yes Steiner yes Motion carries. If anybody needs the maps from our last council packet, I could run and go get additional copies. 
unless everybody knows where the site is. I know where it is. 